27-year-old man found dead in a killer whale's tank at SeaWorld. He was not detected by the night watch trainers. Nobody knew until the morning that there was a body in there. Daniel Dukes must have regretted his crazy stunt when he was pulled down by his scrotum into the tank of one of the most notorious killer whales in history. As a petty drug abuser and trespasser, Dukes was known for doing crazy things in life. The man who appeared deranged to witnesses thought he could break into SeaWorld, swim with an orca, and escape. What he didn't bargain for was Tilikum, the beloved orca that slaughtered him in such a vicious and painstaking way. The monster whale attacked him violently when Dukes jumped into the pool. Dukes was battered and thrashed around the pool, bitten and bruised. At one point, Tilikum caught hold of his scrotum and dragged him down. When he drowned, the whale tore it off completely. When they found his body, Dukes was left totally unrecognizable. What possessed Daniel Dukes to trespass in the sea world is anybody's guess. Eyewitnesses reported Dukes mumbling to himself while hanging around the entrance to SeaWorld. This was one last break-in that finally got the better of him. Dukes was a troubled man with a history of drug abuse. One particular report in the Orlando Sentinel described Dukes as a marijuana-smoking drifter from South Carolina with a string of petty arrests. While he wasn't considered violent, most arrests included drug possession, petty theft, and trespassing. Dukes didn't fit in with society and was regarded as having several issues. He was also prone to impulsive behavior and was reported to be obsessed with the game Ultima. In March of 1996, he even broke into the home of the game's creator, Richard Garriott, who fired a gun at Dukes as a warning. Instead of being scared, Dukes walked up to Garriott's bedroom, stripped himself, and tucked himself into Garriott's bed. It was there that police arrested him when they responded to a 911 call from Garriott. His neighbors described him as a gentle person who loved nature. One priest of a Hare Krishna temple near Dukes' home claimed he often fed homeless people and loved feeding wild birds. One woman named Susan wrote online that Dukes was a clean-cut, happy-go-lucky kid who had a great sense of humor. He was a good student and her friend. From the mixed responses, it was clear that Dukes had two very different personalities. Sadly, one got the better of him the day he decided to break into SeaWorld. On July 6, 1999, Dukes was seen hanging around the gates of SeaWorld, where eyewitnesses said he looked dirty. He was talking to himself and reeked of a foul odor. Just a few days before he was seen at SeaWorld, Dukes had spent three days in jail for stealing a Three Musketeers bar. Some of the witnesses who provided sworn testimonies said Dukes' attire was questionable, while others said he was wandering around the front gate plaza, glaring suspiciously at young girls. The eyewitnesses' statements proved that Dukes was not in a clear frame of mind. His urge to break into an establishment was too much. He just had to do it. Dukes managed to get into the marine park and strip. He had swimming shorts beneath his trousers, which suggests he had planned his reckless stunt all along. Unfortunately, though, he chose to dive into the tank of the most notorious killer whale in the history of marine entertainment. Dukes was unaware of Tilikum, the killer whale, who showed no mercy when he wanted to kill. Tilikum was an 11-ton orca whose 22-foot frame made him look like a monster in his tank. He was a tragic victim of circumstance, a whale who never took kindly to captivity. The killer whale was captured back in 1983 in Iceland and was brought to SeaWorld in Orlando in 1992. Tilikum's transition from the vast expanse of the ocean to living in a tank was a nightmare. His training was fraught with incidents of rebellion, inviting the wrath of other orcas who repeatedly beat him up. Tilikum's frustration and pent-up rage exploded when he killed his first victim, female trainer Kelty Byrne, in 1991. On July 6, 1999, Tilikum was probably pacing around in his pool. It had been 13 years since his capture, yet he could not get used to being docile in his tin can of a home. Trainers were extremely careful with Tilikum. They knew the orca had tasted blood once, and there was no way of knowing if he would ever go berserk again. Yet. Daniel Dukes unknowingly gave him a chance to prove what a killer Tilikum could be. 
Whether the security cameras captured the incident is unknown, but Dukes waited for the crowd to disperse. As soon as it grew dark, he broke into the marine park and made a straight beeline for the orca tank. In his mind, he was living out one more escapade, another adventure. He could get caught or he might not. He didn't realize that this would be the last break-in of his entire life. As soon as Dukes jumped into Tillicum's tank, he may have yelled, who wouldn't? After all, the water in the tank was a chilly 50 degrees and icy cold. Sensing the sudden movement in the water, it was doubtful Tillicum gave Dukes a warning. They are trained to understand when it is performing time and when it's not. This was not the case, nor was it common practice for humans to enter the tank at this time. This was different so he was not required to comply with commands, and neither a whistle nor any other order was forthcoming. He was free to do whatever he pleased to the person who jumped into his tank, and with that possible thought, Tillicum attacked. Dukes had no chance and wasn't rational enough to even realize that a 22-foot killer whale was about to maul him. From his injuries, it was evident that the orca battered him, most likely with his snout, the impact of being rammed by a killer whale of this size would be enough to break Dukes' ribs, knocking him out cold. No human can withstand the force of 12,000 pounds. Dukes' bones must have shattered instantly. The whale then caught Dukes by the unlikeliest of places, his scrotum, and dragged him down to the bottom of the pool. One can only imagine the amount of torturous pain in that moment that Dukes felt. Sadly, Tillicum wasn't entirely done. The hunt had just begun. If captive orcas attack have taught us anything, it is that they are not satisfied with their victims, even after they're dead. Tillicum then played brutally with Dukes' body, thrashing him like a rag doll, biting him, and almost churning him into putty. The next day, when the marine park trainers came around for the morning routine, the sight of Tillicum's pool horrified them. On the back of Tillicum laid the lifeless resemblance of what looked to be a human. The killer whale was proudly parading around in his pool with his new prize, and try as they might, he did not let any of the trainers near him. Eventually, Tillicum was manipulated to give up the body of Dukes, and it was shocking what the trainers found. Dukes was unrecognizable. He had lacerations, abrasions, and bruises all over his body. The most terrifying sight of all was his lower body. He had no genitals. They had been completely bitten off. Dukes' face was a mess. He looked so bizarre that his funeral had to be held in a closed casket. Unlike the first incident where Tillicum killed his trainer, the one concerning Dukes created a sensation. It was the first time the orca killed an outsider. The official report detailed how a nearly psychotic man and trespasser with little regard for his own safety drowned in a killer whale's tank. The orca's attack on Dukes may have been caught on camera along with confirmed images of the orca swimming around with Dukes on his back, but SeaWorld has yet to release them. Daniel Dukes was indeed a troubled individual with a record of petty crimes. Still, being a human being, he will instead be remembered as Tillicum's second victim in the first significant incident at SeaWorld. The incident concerning Dukes did not do much to make SeaWorld sit up and take notice. In 2010, Tillicum would kill again in a manner that would shock the entire world. In front of a live audience, Tillicum would attack and kill trainer Don Pachoa, revealing a dark side to the orca, who thought nothing of attacking someone he had trained with for several weeks. The big question is, who is to blame? Is it Tillicum's fault? As one expert put it, these magnificent giant marine mammals live the equivalent of a human life in a prison cell without being a convict. The whales got bored, and when they do, they kill for sport, just like in the ocean. Be it a shark, a dolphin, or a human, they are different. Do you agree that such large animals should not be kept in captivity because the inevitable is bound to happen? We have our takes, but so do other people surrounding a similar incident shown on screen. <laughs>